to our webinar on shortcuts and tips and tricks in Design Manager. This week we're going to be focusing more on some simple yet often overlooked features in Design Manager that can make your data entry more rapid, uh, provide information more readily, or otherwise improve your overall Design Manager experience. Some of the areas that we're going to cover um, obviously may be known to you already, but I hope to point out at least a few features that are previously unknown to uh, each attendee today. Uh, as usual, I'm going to be doing examples in both Design Manager and Design Manager Professional. And if you'd like to see a function or review a function in one platform or the other, just ask at one of the question periods. So let's begin by reviewing some overall function in Design Manager, which some users may not be aware. <clears throat> now remember, there are innate differences between Design Manager and Design Manager Professional um, and how they are structured, so it's going to determine which, um, to what degree some of these recommendations are going to be beneficial. Let's focus on some features that just kind of enhance your ease of use in Design Manager. One of them is the toolbars. Now, Design Manager has our standard set of toolbars along the top left in this case, project specifications, employee, time, documents and accounting, etc. Now, just like any program, I can add or edit or move these toolbars around. For example, I love having my primary functions, but I may also want to show my glossaries. And I can do so by simply going to a blue space or an unutilized space of the toolbar, right click, and select my glossary toolbar as well. So now I have my primary functions and my glossaries. And I can choose to move that around as such, lock it wherever I want, or I could go back to our traditional toolbar. I could right click again and customize these a little bit. For example, I may, I may not want to use Design Manager's tasks and appointments, so I want to remove that from my toolbar. No problem. Just standard tools and uncheck the tasks and appointments. If I ever want to make changes and revert it back to the way we began, just use the reset toolbar. So it's always going to warn you and you reset it, and now I have my tasks and appointments back. I can even get more creative. For example, I might use all of my functions listed here, but I just want to have a quick way to access my vendor glossary, for example. I can do that as well. Go back, customize, go under our commands, and this lists all the functions in Design Manager. And if I go down to glossaries, I can select my vendors and payees and just drag it on up and put it on my toolbar. So you really can customize all the information and access to functions that you require. And we can always get back to resetting the toolbar as well. Back to normal. Let's take a look at professional. Very same exact um, functionality here and concepts. So we have our menu listing, and this is what we call our common controls, which is pretty much all of professional's primary functions in one toolbar. But since the professional platform is designed for uh, larger firms that may have more specialization of, um, of employee resources, you may only focus on not all the common controls, but rather just the project management utilities. Or you might work on the accounts receivable functions as well. So just like the stand design manager, you can customize which toolbars you want to use. And one feature that the professional users really like is these little guys' uh, icons up here rather small. What you can do, right click again, go down to customize, over on options, do the large icon option. And now you have big icons for all of your toolbars that you may utilize, which makes the icons a lot easier to access and to uh, inform yourself of what they really are. So you have your sort of full toolbar um, capabilities there. And we'll get back to our normal toolbar. So toolbars, totally customizable to your needs. Let's take a look at some other features that I find overlooked. Under, let's say, specifications, for example, in both Design Manager and Design Manager Professional, 
you can view all of your um, specifications for your projects in one of two ways. You have your grid format and your tree or hierarchy format. In professional, there's a tab for each, the item view and the tree view, while in design manager, the two are side by side. So you have your tree on your left and you have your um, item grid on the right hand side. But in both of them, we can use as an example for grid functionality in Design Manager. Notice my grid comes up sorted by reference number order. How can I tell that? Well, I have two arrows facing to the right. That's indicating to me that I'm sorting this grid by the column reference number in our um, example, and I'm going from in ascending order, in other words, A to Z. If I click the same column heading again, Notice that my arrows click to the left, and now I'm going in descending order, or Z to A. And you can do so for any of the column headings, location code, location name, and even description. Now, one handy thing that you can use is once you have your column sorted in the manner you choose, you can quickly find a, um, uh, an entry or a record by just typing the desired, um, the desired uh, record, like in this case, description. If I'm looking for our chain link orange um, wall covering, all I have to do is start typing chain, and I jump right down to that entry. Or if I'm sorted by reference number, and I want to get down to um, the maple sleigh bed, which I know is item 0021, just start typing on your keyboard, and you'll hop right to it. In uh, design manager terms, we call this our rapid sort or search functions. So almost all of the grids in design manager function in this, um, in this method. Also, speaking of grids, they allow us to, um, as an example, for another feature in design manager, and that is the right-clicking option. Right-clicking in computing is a powerful tool as it gives you access uh, to immediate functions where they belong. For example, if we're on our professional platform here, I can just right-click. And guess what? I have availability to add items, or I could edit my selected item as well, and even, if applicable, delete. So right-clicking throughout the software gives you a vast array of um, tools that are relevant to the window you're on. Now, in Design Manager, rather than Professional, it's designed for smaller firms where there, there is that less compartmentalization of, um, of functionality or um, uh, uh, employees' goals and resources. So right-clicking is a little bit more enhanced on this platform. For example, I could right-click on our California King bed here and see a whole menu of different uh, functions that I could use. I could edit, I could create new projects, items, and components, I can delete, copy, all the functions that apply to this entry, in this case the item, are available to me. Even so, I can go down to this Documents and Accounting and hop right over to that window from here as well. Uh, you even have more functions of right-clicking. Again, it, it provides all of the functionality relevant to what you're right-clicking on. For example, I can right-click on proposals and do new proposals. If I have purchase orders, I have I can edit, I can get my order status, I can print review, and I can even create new accounting entries as well. So experiment with right-clicking throughout both of the platforms, and you can really get to a variety of functions very rapidly. Also, known to most of us, I imagine, but some still don't, is when I have a particular entry highlighted, I can always hit my Edit button or right-click and do Edit. But don't forget that almost all of the grids in Design Manager also allow you to double-click, whereby I can simply double-click on an item to edit it, or even in circumstances such as my glossaries, if I have my vendor glossary, I can highlight and edit, or I could just 
double click on the entry and bring that up as well. Again, it maximizes your um, ease of use by having fewer mouse movements and allows you to get to your entries as fast as possible. So experimenting with the different functionality in Design Manager just by right clicking, double clicking and those sort of things really allow you to get through the software faster. Let's take a look a little deeper here. Another aspect of the software in general is Design Manager has been created with the concept of screen flow in mind. What I mean by that is I can see that my cursor is blinking in my client description field. Now screen flow allows us to use the tab key. So if I tab, I jump to the next natural field in order, in this case the location. And you can see by the location now turning blue, that's the field I'm in. Also with quantity, unit of measure, sales category, etc. And I can even continue to tab through to where I have now accessed my add, edit, and delete buttons. You can see that the add has that little rectangle around it. If I hit enter or the space bar here, I'm now accessing the add function. So the screen flow and the usage of tab allows you to rapidly get around a window without constantly having to go back and forth to your mouse. So again, experiment with those sort of things and you can really sort of hone your ability to navigate a particular window as rapidly as possible. Let's take a little bit more um, features on the item window as an example. Notice that I have both my search icon and my spell check icon highlighted uh, when I'm in the description field. So I can go down and click on the spell check and check all of my spelling, which I always recommend to uh, ensure that um, everything we're entering in Design Manager is spell check and looks professional to our clients. But again, I want to minimize the amount of times where I have to move my mouse. So there's what we call hotkeys in Design Manager. And two of the most important are the combination of your Alt and your S key and your Alt and your C key. Alt C stands for check or spell check. So if I click on my Alt and my C, I bring up my spell check uh, window. So those are our hotkeys. Spell checking is one. The other would be our search. So whenever we're in a field that has a uh, design manager glossary or search window behind it, the search icon is illuminated in the bottom left corner. And it's actually a magnifying glass. People think of it as a spy glass or those sort of things. But it is our search glossary. To access that without having to go down to the bottom of the window and click, just hit your Alt S keys. And you bring up the appropriate glossary or search for the field that your cursor is currently located. So again, we're trying to minimize mouse movements and maximize the ease of use for you with these hotkeys, double clicks, right clicks, etc. Top of the Design Manager platform for a moment and we'll experiment a little bit further as I have some other hidden tricks in there. <clears throat> Notice, just like our location and our sales category, vendor, etc., the description also has a search icon beneath it. Generally, these are for remarks, terms, special instructions that you uh, utilize frequently on your invoices, POs, proposals, etc. But the remark slash description glossary can be used very creatively. And I've seen a lot of design manager users uh, employ it in manners that even I didn't think of. One of them is to create a standardized description template. And here's what I mean. I've created a remarks or description entry that has a standardized format that I want all of my employees or myself to follow when I'm entering in specifications, whereby I would type in the item description and I always want particular fields to be entered as well. So rather than having to retype this every single time I'm making an item, I've created a description entry for me whereby all I need to do 
search it, and hit choose. And now I always know that I have to enter in my item description and to fill in the appropriate uh, attributes that I always want displayed on a particular item. So you can use these remarks and description searches very creatively uh, rather than constantly retyping things that you find yourself doing over and over again when using the software. Let's take another look at some searches that I find a little underutilized. For example, say we're entering in some bills. Okay, Let's do, I don't know, an operating expense for ABC Computer Supply. When I'm entering in all my bills, I notice, uh, particularly when I'm doing uh, technical support for um, design manager users or training out in the field, I often see users feel compelled to enter a date in the traditional format of you know, 06-19-14 or even 2014 or even without the leading zero. You don't have to do that in Design Manager. To enter in a given date for the current year, all that's required is the month, space, the day. Tab out of that, and Design Manager recognizes that as a valid date. So you can save those little keystrokes over time. It may seem insignificant, but if you're entering in many, many bills, and you're constantly typing 6 slash 19 slash 14, it becomes tedious. No need. Just six space, the date, boom, you're ready to go. Further, there's also a hidden search behind our dates as well that's underutilized. Notice that our search icon is indeed illuminated down there. So if the vendor calls and says, oh, I'm going to be shipping a particular uh, piece of merchandise on next Friday or something along those lines, or um, I'm told by the principal of the business to uh, record a cash receipt, uh, next Monday, rather than struggling with the date, I can use my search icon to bring up a calendar search as well. Bill's coming in next Friday, no problem. There it is. So also, besides the fact that you can quickly enter dates with just the month, space, day, you also have a search, um, calendar search on each date field as well that I find uh, overlooked by many users. Let's stay on the operating expense here. And I want to show another uh, hidden or underutilized feature. Let's say I'm putting in my bills for our ABC computer um, supply. Uh, let's say I got a new hard drive from them. Okay, put that in as the invoice number. Put that in as my uh, transaction description. And my office supplies account is conveniently defaulted from my ABC computer supply vendor. And let's say the hard drive cost, oh, I don't know, I may have a list of operating expenses or bills that I have to type in. I could click OK and then add a new one, and then click OK and add a new one. But Design Manager, when creating new entries, has the OK Add feature. What does this do? Well, it actually saves the entry that I just finished and now allows me to stay on the same window to rapidly enter in another. So I could hop on over. And uh, let's say I'm putting in my Alt-S Verizon. This could be uh, July's or June's phone bill. Alt-S again, today's date, June 2014. Use my Tab key to get over to my Add button. Again, I don't need to use the uh, mouse if I don't want to. Hit Space. I can account is conveniently located from my Verizon um, uh, vendor. And let's say I put the bill in for, oh, I don't know, 105. If I click OK now, in the traditional manner, I'm going to be saving that entry and uh, closing the window down. So here is my operating expense for uh, Verizon. But I also have my original operating expense on our hard drive for ABC Computer Supply. So when, for those of you who are entering in cash receipts, uh, bills from vendor, or even items and components themselves, back on our specifications window, 
I have the ability to use the OK add on my item and even component window. So you create the specification very rapidly, hit the OK add button, keep your window up, and begin typing right away. Once again, we're trying to focus on minimizing unnecessary mouse clicks and those sort of things, which over time can really save you quite a bit of, um, uh, of input time into Design Manager. So those are a bunch of the sort of underutilized ease of use features that I find commonly overlooked when I'm working with uh, clients out in the field. Liz, do we have any uh, questions that I could grab before continuing on? Brad, we've answered all the questions we've had, so you can continue on. Okay, fantastic. Uh, let's do a couple other features that I think a lot of people don't know about in Design Manager. Say we're making a new item, and this could be some pendant light fixture. Many of you do know that you can associate a picture with a given uh, item in Design Manager. This picture will then appear optionally on your proposal and invoices to the client. Uh, the professional users, you could in include that as in your delivery tickets as well. And you have a couple of different ways to get pictures in there. If you still have a scanner around, you can put an image of the picture onto the scanner, hit the scan button, and Design Manager will import that into what we call our picture control. That's probably the least commonly utilized uh, method these days. Much more commonly would be to use the load feature. I click on the load button and go out to my, uh, my local hard drive or my local computer or even my network and bring in or import an image uh, from somewhere I have saved already. But the most convenient feature is the paste image from clipboard. So here I can go out to let's say restoration hardware site. I can how about this one? I can right click on a picture, copy image, and guess what? Back onto Design Manager, just use the paste image from clipboard and bam, there it is. I don't need to save it from restoration hardware, load it on my computer. I just copy the image and Design Manager is going to handle uh, using, the, uh, using and saving the image file itself for us. So the paste image from clipboard, very, very handy ahead and save our pendant light fixture. And that brings me to thinking about um, pasting in general. Don't forget in Design Manager that you have the ability to copy or replicate items and components uh, within the software. So if you know, uh, for instance, our new pendant light fixture, let's say that uh, the Carters uh, really love it and it looks fantastic in their home and we might have shown an example of it to the Hilsons. Rather than retyping all the information for the pendant light fixture, vendor cost, all those sort of things, I can minimize my time. Just highlight the entry and hit the copy button. Or right click and do copy. And then I can go down to the desired project. And let's say we'll put this into the wine cellar and go ahead and use the paste button. Or I can right click and paste. And just like that, I've immediately recopied all that information from one project into another. And I can do a lot more than that. If we look at the Pro platform, I have the functions here as well. Rather than on the item view, though, all that copy and paste functionality is on our tree view. So I could grab our chandelier, copy, or I could right click and copy. And then I could put that into the Carter's Brigantine Beach Home as well in, oh, I don't know, the guest bedroom, I assume. Paste. And now I've replicated it that quickly as well. You can even get more creative than that with the copy and paste. I might want to replicate an entire location or even an entire project. I can do so. I can right click on the outdoor living area, copy, and I could put that into Carter's Pennington home and paste it in. And now I've replicated an entire location of items. Each one of these may take me several minutes to enter. I've now just replicated them instantaneously between two projects. So the project um, copy and paste, very, very, very handy. 
uh, to utilize when you're trying to um, quickly replicate items between uh, different projects or even within a single project. And that leads me to another feature. Say I want to copy an item from one project to another and I am looking for oh I don't know let's say um, some Italian leather sofa as an example and I know somewhere in all of my projects I can't even recall which one that I have this wonderful Italian leather sofa how can I find that rapidly well each platform design manager and professional has what we call our specification search on professional it's accessed by the little spec search button and it brings us to our specification search window on design manager on our project and specifications window you would click the search button and you can see the specification search window is pretty much identical in each now this window besides being a really powerful tool where you can analyze the status of specifications and you can monitor their profitability we designed it predominantly to quickly find uh, an item or a component based on a variety of criteria. I might want to see uh, everything that I've ordered from a particular vendor for a particular project for those things. But most commonly, I'm just trying to track down an item that I've used in the past. So I could use this various criteria in here, and you can see pretty much everything you could think of is available. I could go up to items with a description containing and I could put in as little or as much of a given item that I know. For example, we pop in sofa, I'm going to go out and see every item that has the word sofa in it. And here is our Italian leather sofa that I was trying to find. From our spec search window, I can use this go to button and jump right over there so I can now copy and uh, paste my Italian leather sofa from one project into the next. So the spec search window is very, very handy um, to find items and, and components, obviously. But as I said before, it can also be used for a variety of analytics when you're trying to see how much accessories you may have uh, sold uh, or those type of tools as well. And that leads us to thinking, well, if we have this handy specification search window, is there a complementary window uh, for our accounting transactions? Well, there most certainly is. In professional, that feature is our transaction search, which is accessed off the common controls, or you can get to it from your general ledger, transaction search. This window allows us to find any type of fiscal or uh, accounting transaction that we may have entered based upon a, a wide variety of criteria. For example, let's say that um, we're trying to find a particular check for the Hilsons. Well, I could put in my project code. I know it's from the Hilsons, and they're saying that they sent me check 4500. Okay, if I use my find. I'm now going to go out and see all of the transactions in Design Manager for Hilson for check 4500. Very, very handy way to quickly find information in Design Manager for accounting basis. Further, those of you who um, uh, function predominantly in the accounting realm of Design Manager, this is one of your go-to windows when you're trying to analyze transactions, uh, find them quickly, and even gain uh, information that you can use analytically as well. Handy feature here. Also, now I've got my uh, check number. Oh, there it is. Our check 4,500 was for 4,000. I once again can use the go to button and even jump to that particular transaction in Design Manager. So the uh, both of the specific uh, the search windows, transaction and specification are really powerful tools, uh, so much so that they actually have their own webinar that we did a few weeks back, uh, which you can view on our YouTube channel. And all we do is focus on um, all of the functionality and the benefits of both of those windows. Now, well, we quickly showed that the transaction search and the specification search have these handy go-to buttons. Well, 
these are strategically located throughout the software to quickly jump to um, particular information so you're not searching through one window or the, or, the, or the next. Remember that Design Manager is fully integrated, so we have these go-tos uh, around um, each platform so you can quickly access all the integrated information. Let's take a peek back on Design Manager and we'll see a couple other areas where we can use our go-to buttons. One that comes um, most readily to mind is our checking window. First off, right away, we can see we have a go-to button on our pay bills, print checks um, tab, which is very convenient for as I'm getting ready to indicate any of these bills are ready for payment, I may catch uh, an error. For example, how about a Verizon? Mm, this bill should not have been entered at 104. I entered it incorrectly. I need to make a change to 150. Well, I can go back to documents and accounting, go down to Verizon, find it, edit it, but Rather than going through that stage, just use our go to and bingo, I hop right over to my documents and accounting window with my particular operating expense um, highlighted and right here I can do my edit and change our 105 to 150. Notice that that automatically updates our checking window as well. So that's one of our go-to's that I find uh, utilized over and over again. Some other areas on the credit card activity. You have um, a go-to here. So if I need to make changes or um, find some more information about uh, what exactly I put on my American Express for Century Furniture, I can use the go-to here. And again, I reformat my documents and accounting and get right to the, um, uh, the highlighted operating expense, or in this case, um, vendor invoice. And similarly, on our professional platform, we do the exact same on our checking window, credit cards. We can use the go-to here, and this goes to our vendor deposit invoice and operating expenses window with the particular entry highlighted, ready for my review, edit, etc. few other areas on our checkbook tab itself. Let's take a peek here. Let's go back a few months. Ah, perfect. Not only do I have uh, a go-to um, function included on my checkbook tab, this has a few other features that I want to point out that I often find underutilized. For example, let's go down to a particular deposit. Now, we know that a particular deposit may cover um, multiple receipts from one client or even multiple clients, particularly if it's a check deposit that I um, recorded. So I might want to know, well, out of this 16, 95, 15 and change, what actually is comprised in there? I can use my details button. The details then shows the actual entry itself and even the pieces that make up those entries. So we have all of these particular checks and reference numbers on a particular deposit slip. And conveniently located right at the bottom of the details window is another go-to button so I can hop over to that cash receipt itself and make any applicable changes as necessary. Likewise, checks as well. So if I look down at uh, America's Mattress, I can view details and even more details on the check detail. I can see the ch I can see all of the bills that I paid via a check, and then I can see the accounts affected by a particular bill. And in the case of vendor invoices or um, operating expenses or such, I would even see the components listed that are shown for such um, vendor invoices. So there's a lot of hidden information at your fingertips in all of these windows. Also on our checkbook tab is a very handy transfer function. One of the um, common tech support questions we receive are individuals trying to move money between accounts. And you can do so in a variety of ways in Design Manager. Uh, I can make a miscellaneous cash receipt out of one account into the other, 
or I could uh, struggle with the debits and credits uh, on a journal entry. But why bother with those um, methods when I have a transfer function that allows me to easily move money between uh, various checking accounts or cash accounts. So if I wanted to move, let's say, $1,000 from my checking account into my money market account, all I have to do is select the account where I'm taking the funds from as the source and select the account where I'm transferring them to as the destination. Just by hitting OK, I have moved the money out of the cash checking and into our money market. Very handy, very fast, very accurate, and you don't need to worry about making any mistakes on that. A couple other things on the checking window, um, since a lot of information does get funneled into this window. Reconciliations. Um, they can, can consume precious time uh, in the best of circumstances. So try to utilize some of the design manager's uh, available functions to make that process as fast as possible. For example, let's select our cash checking here. Remember, I can just do six month date, ready to go. There's a lot of ways to make this process as fast as possible. One of them is the clear function. So I could go through, take my bank statement, and manually select off each of the entries, uh, indicating that they have indeed um, been included on my most recent bank statement. But if I have a large volume of transactions, that can be a very tricky and time-consuming process. So I often go to the clear button. This allows me to clear or uh, indicate um, deposits and checks as hitting the bank very rapidly. For example, when I'm doing my bank recs, I find it more common that there are simply a few entries within a period that are not cleared. So I tend to clear all of them and then just mark off the ones that are not on the statement. It's a lot faster than manually selecting each uh, deposit and check separately. If I have done this erroneously and I need to back out my clearing, no problem. Go back to clear, and I can unclear everything. There we go. Now I'm back to the beginning. Another very handy feature. I have seen um, or helped um, many design manager users that really have incredible amount of activity coming in and out of their cash checking account. And the statement may be several pages long and literally hundreds or even thousands of transactions. In those cases, the, um, the design manager user gets stuck trying to find a particular entry either in design manager or on the statement. So I always say go back to your clear button and just put the amount in. For example, if I'm trying to find a $200 check, I can just put the amount under checks and boom, I have now found and cleared my $200 check to NRG Energy. Very handy uh, and allows you to get these little um, particular uh, entries that may be hiding from you and clear them very rapidly. That makes me think of other ways to rapidly select uh, many entries in Design Manager. Most commonly, Take a look over at the professional platform. We often need to select items or components when we're creating our proposals, invoices, um, uh, delivery tickets, etc. So if we look at our proposals, I have none yet for my Carter's Pennington home. Let me add a new one. Look on your selection windows for the tag function. This allows us to select a wide variety of items or components depending on the window rapidly. So I could select each one of these individually, but I could miss one, I could put one incorrectly, I could use my tag and get them all. I've now tagged everyone and I haven't missed any. I could then undo that by untagging all. And a few that I find particularly useful are tagging by a particular location. 
guest bedroom, for example. Boom, I've got all of my guest bedrooms, and I haven't missed a single one. And just like my check example, I've seen many um, uh, design manager users with projects that may have literally um, hundreds or thousands of items, and they're trying to track down item 0018, and they just can't seem to get through it on the new proposal window or new invoice window. No problem. Go back to your tag and use the item and just input the reference number and you can even do a range of reference numbers if desired. And Design Manager is going to go out and include item 18 along with all of the other uh, guest bedroom one items that I've previously selected. So once again, rather than uh, struggling with uh, finding particular entries, use some of the features that Design Manager already has available to really make it easier for yourselves. Um, let's see where we are. Hey, Liz, do we have any questions that are um, yet unanswered before I continue? Brad, we do have a great question. Um, the question is, is there a way to go from specification screen to the proposal, to a proposal without closing the spec screen and opening a proposal screen? Uh, absolutely. Um, in both platforms, for instance, in our professional, I have my proposals and documents open. I have my specifications open. I can utilize both of them simultaneously. So if I want to work on my specifications to hone it um, before I make my proposal, absolutely. Make my changes to my item, and then I can come right over to our proposals and start selecting here as well. And you can do the same on Design Manager. I can have my project and specifications open. I can make any edits to the item that I might need. And I can simultaneously have my documents and accounting open and begin to make my proposal. What I do not suggest is to make changes to an item and leave the item window open while I'm making my proposal. Why? Because of several reasons. One. If you haven't yet saved your changes, they're not going to be reflected on the new proposal window. That's a big one. Secondly, you may um, be accessing a, uh, the exact same area in your database. So you might actually lock yourself out. And uh, you, many users have maybe have seen in, um, a message code 3218. Um, another user is accessing the data where you are. That's precisely how those things sort of um, happen. So if you're doing the work yourself, save the item, and then go over to your proposal. But as far as having both documents in accounting and uh, specifications open simultaneously, you absolutely can do so, just as you can on the professional platform, have both open as well. Uh, did that satisfy Liz, or is there a follow-up on that question? A very good one, by the way. I think that was great, Brad. I think that answered the question. And we don't have any more questions at this time. Fantastic. Well, we still have uh, a few minutes here, so I'm going to show a couple extra features that I often try to point out um, while I'm doing my training or I find commonly asked about uh, from Design Manager users. One, very important one, on our reports window. If you notice, Design Manager has somewhere in the realm of 120 uh, reports, give or take. I may only function on project management, perhaps I might do some accounts receivable as well. And there are certain reports that I find very handy and I need to have um, access quickly. Well, in this report tree, it's very easy to sort of get yourself lost in there. So what I always recommend is to, once you've found a report that suits your needs perfectly, let's say my uh, profit analysis, for example, I use the Add to Favorite button. And that puts onto my favorites list so I can rapidly get it. And each time that I come into Design Manager, I don't need to hunt through my project management reports. I have it accessible for me. Moreover, if I really want to get organized, I may have, I can create folders within my own favorites. For example, I may make a new folder for my weekly reports. And now I would put under Oh, let's say my account's receivable, my account's payable, etc. So I'm crafting my own custom report tree just for myself. 
and this is for each user in Design Manager. So if there are, um, if you have a firm that has a, a multi-user Design Manager, each one of these can be customized for uh, in the individual users. Report favorites, very very handy, um, and it really lets you get to the reports you need without fighting through the large tree of reports available. Another feature that I uh, often direct um, Design Manager users towards is our handy returns and credits window. Now, the re returns and credits in the design industry are such um, are so common <laughs> that we've created this returns and credits wizard to handle them um, as simply as possible. And it can be done so in two different manners. You may have re returns and credits for your clients, which is the first tab, and you also have returns and credits from your vendor. And we've tried to make the window as quote unquote plug and pay play as possible. In this uh, example, well, what are we doing for the client? We're refunding them a check. And what's it for? Oh, it's for a retainer. And then we just fill in the appropriate project, date, amount, etc. So just utilize the go right from left to right up and down on each of these windows and you put the appropriate information in. Upon processing the return of credit, Design Manager handles all of the accounting for you. And again, you can do it for clients and you can do it for vendors as well. Both of these are described <clears throat> very nicely in the help on how these functions and we also have um, a, two, two, a uh, webinar just on vendor returns and credits and client returns and credits, which I often um, and always suggest to uh, view on our YouTube channel as well. On the professional, we have returns and credits just the same off of our general ledger drop down, and there's our returns and credits window here, and you can see that in each platform, the windows are very similar. Very, very handy because returns and credits happen all the time. This takes the mistakes out of the, your hands and really allows you to process it um, worry-free. Another aspect of the software, which I constantly um, find myself indicating to design manager users, are all of the various status informations available to you. And we have them literally all over the softwares. If we're looking at design manager, for example, at the project level, if I edit a project, I have a status window. This is showing me all of my accounting activity associated with this one project. So if I have uh, several employees in my firm, I don't need to constantly um, bother the accounts receivable person or the accounts payable person to uh, know if a check has come in or if an invoice has been uh, sent to the client and paid. I have that information available right to me at the project level. Similarly, in professional, we have the project status window, which is a little bit more robust for that platform where it has a lot of summary information for deposits, invoice purchasing, and then breaks down uh, your cash coming in as deposits, retainers, and invoices as well. And notice the handy dandy go to button here. Further, if I'm looking at uh, particular items for a project, I have item status. This is going to indicate to me any, let's use a better example here, perfect. This is going to indicate to me any proposals that I may have included the item upon, even the check information, um, how much money I received, the check number and date from the client, and even the invoicing information. What invoice was it included upon, deposit applied, uh, even the check and balance due information here as well. Again, Design Manager being integrated, the information is fed back to where you're trying to receive it. If you're trying to access information on an item, here's your status to do so. Similarly, on our component window, we have the vendor side status under order status, whereby I would see all of my purchase order listed, any deposit funds and check numbers that I have sent, and I have vendor invoices as well. All my bills that I've recorded for this component would show here. So I don't need to, again, uh, go and find the uh, gentleman or woman that may be entering the bills for me and ask if it's been paid because right in front of me, the information is available. Further, we have 
off of our proposal window, another underutilized feature is the, oops, let's go over to Design Manager. is the proposal status window. Let's generate one real quick to see how that looks. Yes. So notice I have my proposal listed. I have a status option here. I really enjoy this window because it breaks down all the information for me for a particular set of items on a given proposal. So rather than focusing on the tens, scores, dozens, or thousands of items I may have in a particular project, I'm trying to monitor the information from the client just on these particular items. Have I requested a deposit? Have I received that deposit? How was it paid? In this case, a visa or a check? Was it invoiced to the client, etc.? So it really focuses my attention and narrows the scope of my uh, information to just the items on a particular proposal which we also have corresponding on our POs. We have PO status as well. This filters and allows us to enter all of our order tracking information in as well. Acknowledgements and all of your receiving information. So rather than keeping track of all of this information on your Excel sheet or on a, a Word doc or other mechanisms outside of Design Manager, really try to find and utilize all these status windows in the software because you're keeping all your information integrated into Design Manager rather than using outside sources uh, or inconsistent manners throughout the company. This standardizes it for you and allows you to show all the information integrated throughout the software. So with that, that brings us towards the end of our webinar today. Um, I hope everyone enjoyed our somewhat less formal and less traditional webinar, and I hope everyone came away with at least something beneficial to their design manager experience and uh, can be used to assist them in the future. And if there are no questions, Liz, I'm going to turn it back over to you to conclude today. Brad, I don't, we don't have any questions that we have answered, so I think we're going to move on and end things here. Um, thanks, Brad, and thank you to everyone who attended. We invite you to email support at designmanager.com with any other questions you have about the software. Like Brad said, we hope you enjoyed today's webinar. If you would like to join us for next week's webinar, Company Settings, please visit designmanager.com to register. Or if you would like to see a recorded version of this webinar or you missed one of our previous webinars, please visit our YouTube channel at Design Manager Training. Thank you again for attending and we hope you guys have a great day.